hi viewers welcome back in our today tutorial i will show you how to do sampling for a study how to conduct that study or how to do sampling for pdm pdm is post distribution monitoring for example if you distributed something and you want to conduct a study so for that how to do sampling in short in this video we will cover how to do sampling for any type of study and how to conduct pdm post distribution monitoring study and in this video we will cover how to calculate that sampling uh, by locations and how to do all this analysis in microsoft excel so first of all whenever you want to do sampling for any type of study or a research so you need these three things Number one is the target population or the beneficiary where you want to conduct the study. Then you need the confidence level to decide about the confidence level and margin of error. If you have these three things, so you will get sampling very easily. Now, what is this target population? What is confidence level? What is margin of error? Target population is, for example, if you are conducting a study in a province or in a a district so that district or that province is your target population if you are conducting a study for your project where you already have registered your beneficiaries so then the target population would be the beneficiaries now i will explain this in excel how to obtain this information now what is the confidence level and margin of error Whenever we are conducting a study, so we need to decide about the confidence level and the margin of error. Usually 90%, 95% or 99% confidence level is selected for studies. And margin of error from 1% to 5% and 10% up to 10% we select margin of error. Now what is this confidence level? Confidence level is for example, if you select 0% confidence level. So that would mean that you have no path at all that if you repeated the survey that you would get the same result if you have decided about zero confidence level. Confidence level mean how much confidence you have in your uh, sampling uh, for that research. If you have selected 95% confidence level. So that would mean that you have faith that almost 95% of the time if you repeated the survey that you would get the same result so 95% confidence means almost 95% of the time if you repeated the survey you would get the same result if you selected 90% though that would mean that almost 90% of the time if you repeat the survey you would get the same result so sometimes we select 90% also for example if you have a large number of uh, target population and you don't want to do um, the study in a at a large scale uh, due to budget uh, constraint etc so you can select 90% also that's also good because 90% of the time the result would be the same now what is this margin of error a margin of error is a statistical measurement that accounts for the difference between actual and projected results in a random survey sample in simple words the margin of error allows you to gauge the level of unpredictability in data and research outcome a margin of error tells you how many percentage point your result will differ from the real population value a 95 percent confidence level with a 5 percent margin of error if you have selected 5 percent margin of error so that would mean that your statistic will be within 5 percentage points of the real population value 95 percent of the time 95 percent of the confidence for example this is a simple example let's look at this for example if you have selected 5 percent margin of error so if a result finding says that something is 95 percent you are conducting a study and you are obtaining satisfaction level of uh, respondents a and the data shows that 92 percent of the respondent were satisfied so if you have selected 5% margin of error, so that would mean that it can be between 87 to 97%. 92% is the actual result. So plus minus that margin of error. So it can either be 
up to 97%. This is the 5% margin of error example. That it can be minus 5% or 5% of the actual result. Now actual result is 92%. So if you have selected 5% margin of error, so it can be 87% or 97% between 87 and 97%. This way you decide about the confidence level and the margin of error. The more you increase the confidence level and the more you decrease the margin of error, your sample would be increasing. For example, the simple way to obtain sampling is this is a website here is a website this is the link of the website you can uh, see this and i have given this link in the description of the video also go to this site let's go to this site this is that site okay here you have to give margin of error confidence level and population size when you give these three um, figures so you will get the sample here. For example, uh, my target population, the target population means the whole population where you are going to conduct a study. Now this response distribution is always 50%. Keep it this way. Now we need these two things, margin of error and confidence level. If I say that my uh, usually we select 5% is a common choice for margin of error. Now confidence level is how much confidence you want uh, for that study. For example, if I selected 95% confidence level. So here you see my sample in these 5000 total population would be 357. I will have to conduct the study with 357 beneficiary. If I increase or decrease this uh, margin of error in confidence level so you would see here the sample would be different for example if i say that i want an increased confidence level i want 99 percent confidence level if i change this to 99 percent so here you can see now the sample is 586 it is increased with 95 percent it was 357 if I select 99, so it is almost double of that sample, 586, because I want an increased confidence level, a much more authentic result. But you can go with 95% or you can go with 90% also. Now, for example, if I selected 99%, so my sample is 586. If I select 95%, so my sample is 357. If I decrease it more, if I say 90%, so now you can see we will have to conduct the study with 257 beneficiaries only if it is 90 percent if i change it to 80 percent then i will have to conduct the study with 106 it is decreased because you have decreased the confidence level you said that 80 percent is also enough but usually the common choice is 90 percent 95 or 99 so we will go with 95% confidence level, which is usually used. Now this is 357. If I increase or decrease margin of error, so that would also affect the sample size. For example, if I say that 5% margin of error is very high, let's say that we would go with 10% margin of error. When I go with 10% margin of error, you can see that the sample is now 95 only. From 357, it is 95 only because you have increased the margin of error. 10% that if a result of something is 80% so that can be 70% or 90% so if you want to go with 10% margin of error 5% is a common choice but you can select 10% or 5% and if I decrease it more for example with 5% it is 357 if I say I just want 1% margin of error so now the sample is 3289 because you have decreased the margin of error to 1% only. That you want that my result should be very close. For example, if something is 92%, so that would be 93 or 91. Only 1% margin of error you want. You would need much more number for your sampling. 3000. If you decrease it to 2%, so now you can see 1623 is your sample. If you uh, increase it to 3%, then you need 880 respondents only. If you go with 5, so then you need 357. We would go with 5% margin of error, 95% confidence level, and my 
population size or my beneficiary number is 5000 so let's calculate this now so here my target population is for example 5000 I want to go with 95% confidence level and 5% margin of error. What would be the sample? If I select 595, 5000, so I will have to conduct the study with 357 participants. You see here, 357 participants. If you go with a sample of 90% and 10% margin of error, then you will see, for example, if I change it to 10% and this 90 then you just need 67 respondent only you see 67 so that is the difference at 95% confidence level in 5% margin of error then you need 357 if you go with 90% confidence level in 10% margin of error then you just need 67 so the choice is yours now we will go with this one okay now what is this percent page of sample in the target population what is the percentage of this sample in the target population let's divide this sample by the target population total target population is 5000 okay so it's only let's see seven percent this 7.1 percent is the sample for your study now if you want if you have the list of your complete uh, target population or if you want to conduct this in a study in villages and in different districts and the seal, so then you need some other type of sampling also, which is stratification. And for that, I will upload another video because that's a little bit complex. For example, if you have five districts, so you will have to go with two or three districts, select them, and then in those districts, select the seals, and this stratification will go on with. Um, in different states this is the the first video so i am explaining it at simple ways that you just need the target population of that area where you are going to conduct a study or if you are conducting a study with beneficiaries so you already have the number of beneficiaries just target population is that number of beneficiary then select um, decide about the confidence level and margin of error then go to this website here you put down your confidence level margin of error and target population and leave this 50% as it is and here you will get the sample size for your study. Now we have obtained this sample size for our study which is 7.1% of the total population. Now if I have the district wise number of this 5000 beneficiaries for example if I have this number so I will go and distribute the sim the sample here also what was the sample the sample is 7.1 percent okay so what i will do i will just is equal to range this male participant of this location one multiply by what was the percentage this is the percentage and apply the dollar rate so that it is locked now you can see you just copy and paste it everywhere and you will obtain location wise sample so here you can see now this is the distributed 357 here you see total and this was 357 so this is the sample by gender and by location also now these are only numbers if you have the list of those 5000 beneficiaries also then you can do for example, in post distribution monitoring, you have con distributed some items, etc., and you want to conduct a study. So, you would already have that sampling, that list of complete beneficiaries here, 5000 beneficiaries you already have here. So, what you will do, you will go to that list, and here, if you want to select with random sampling the different beneficiaries, because this list is of 5000 beneficiaries and I have to select only 357. So, how I can do that? I will go to my database. I will add a column after the district and gender. Why? Because here I need by location and by gender my sample. So what I will do, I will go to the column where the district column and the gender column is before that column. I will add a column here because here you can see that before this column we have the gender and district. Now what I will do, I will use the random random sampling technique which is is equal to because I am here selecting only 357 from these 5000 beneficiary and I do not want any biasness. For that we use random sampling technique which is here in this column 
type is equal to and then r a n d and small bracket start small bracket close just that only and then enter and copy and paste it to the last now here you can see there are different types of digits now what you will have to do select this whole column copy and paste value it because if you do any changes here so you have used random uh, formula and that will keep on changing so what you have to do you have to lock it now so here it has already given digits you see there are some digits higher and some are lower and these digits are from 0 to 1 so 0 to 1 is the random sampling that which of this you should select so first of all select the whole column copy and paste value it go to paste special and paste value it so it is locked now now what you have to do you have to select this column and sort it by z to a so we need this in the descending order now so i will select the column i will go to data and in the data i will sort this from largest to smallest from largest to smallest click sort now here you can see 0 0.999 is in the top because i have already shared that this random numbering give you number from 0 to almost 0 0.999 or 1 so this means this sample the probability of selection of this beneficiary is the highest and then you can go up now what was the number of sampling that we need 357 so what you have to do here type yes or um, no or one or something and select up to 357 participant from the top because you have already sorted it from largest to the smallest go down and select 357 from here you can see now the count it's calculating it and let's assume 357 is up to this mark but let's take 300 and more than 300 360 let's let's take a round figure so 306 up to this point these are the beneficiaries for you which you need to interview or to obtain data for. just type yes from here to the top these are the these yes are the selected 360 is the selected number of beneficiary for the interview of this for the study let's apply a pivot table and check whether we have selected the correct number of beneficiaries according to the sample by districts and by gender or not so let's select this whole data go to insert pivot table and okay in the new sheet here what i need i need district wise number so district in the rows i want to calculate names so this is in the bring it to the values and gender to the columns so here you can see by gender this is the total number this is the total number now now what i need i just need the sampling so here you can see the selection column bring this selection column to the filter now here select yes you remember we have added here yes so i will select only those where i have added yes and okay you see 360 now let's see district wise number this is the district wise number so this is the district wise and by gender numbers i'll come to this selection column select only yes only yes okay so this is the the list of the beneficiaries that you would need to interview so copy this sheet and just bring it to another sheet and name it final sum you should have a backup plan also backup plan what is backup plan now let's come here that is backup sampling here you have selected up to this point this was yes this is sample the sample one now after that you can select some more as backup this is now backup so how much you want in the backup for example if you want that the same number of beneficiary i want in the backup also for example if you have selected 360 in the sample so you want 360 in the backup also 
or if you just want 100 in the backup or 200 or 300 uh, according to your sampling so that if somewhere a beneficiary is not available so you can go to the backup so you can select backup here just go up to uh, the number where you want to stop your backup sampling for example up to this point i have selected 341 more as backup so i can go to the sheet and here i can obtain now the backup number also this is now select backup okay so this is the backup number but in the beneficiary list also you have the backup number so what you can do go to the selection select the backup also and copy and paste it below your final sample and name it as backup this is backup so you can give this list to you, the enumerator or to the staff to collect the data from these people and you can ask them that if someone among the um, those which are marked yes yes mean the original sample uh, so if someone is not available in the original sample so you can go to the backup and select someone from the backup also so this was the sampling which you can do from your data now what is this how to conduct study so this is the list you can go to these people and obtain the information on the tool that you have developed for this study now one way is to go to this sheet the final sample sheet and here you can add a date for the data collection of that beneficiary or something uh, whichever columns or whichever tracking system you want so after that you start your study now for a study i have already done a detailed session on need assessment study if you are going to conduct a need assessment so how to do that and if you are going to conduct pdm post distribution monitoring so what is this pdm post distribution monitoring and how to conduct that post distribution monitoring so pdm is usually done for uh, those beneficiaries where you have distributed some items or some food etc so the list is already with you because you have already distributed the item so for example this is the list of the, those beneficiaries and uh, as explained in the previous video of sampling uh, you have already selected the number of beneficiaries that you would need for that study now what you need to do you need to develop a tool and then conduct your study so what is pdm what is this post distribution monitoring how to do that so basically post distribution monitoring is a mechanism to collect and understand feedback on the quality sufficiency utilization and effectiveness of the assistance that you have provided to the beneficiaries so you are conducting a study after the distribution of that you know, item now what is the met methodology here you would need random sampling from the list of beneficiaries for example this is the list of beneficiaries uh, as explained in the previous video you have obtained your sample this is your sampling 5000 beneficiaries were the total target with 95 percent confidence level and 5 percent margin of error your sample is 357 so from the list of this beneficiary you have selected 357 with random sampling techniques formula that we applied in the previous video and now you are just going to conduct the study so what is the methodology random sampling has done now questionnaire the next thing is questionnaire so first for questionnaire you would need demographic information of that beneficiary for example date of interview village district the seal responded name father name cnic number gender cell number what is the relationship of the respondent to the beneficiary for example if he himself is giving the interview so you will select self if uh, that person is not available the beneficiary and spouse is available so you will select spouse husband brother sister daughter etc then you can obtain some number of that household also uh, of the children that how many people are living in that household this this would help you that whether the assistance that you provided is enough for them or not and uh, similarly uh, then you will start with the questionnaire so in the questionnaire you can add question like this uh, for example did you receive the food pack from organization project name yes no are you aware of the quantity of the pack items uh, uh, this question is important so that whether they know about the quantity of the items or not uh, to avoid any fraud uh, if yes ask below so you will have to list down all the items here and ask him or her whether they have obtained these items or not 
because and this is the list of the item that were the target in the proposal for distribution so you will have to tick mark all these items so that you have authentic information about the distribution of the item then if no if they say no we have not received items according to these quantities so if no then ask why what was the reason and what were the items so you can select and list down all those items which uh, were provided to them and then you can ask the project staff that this was the list of the items and a specific beneficiary has said that he or she has not obtained these items so why then uh, you can ask them some other question like this uh, did you receive the information about the date time and location in advance this is important because this is the sop for the distribution that you should inform the beneficiaries uh, about the date time and location in advance for the distribution so uh, they would say agree this if you don't remember or no response or you can add some other area yes no or you can say um yes they were aware no they were not aware yes they were aware but only about the date not about the time and location etc you can add here different type of responses the date and time of the food pack distribution were suitable for you you can ask the beneficiary about this also that whether the date and time of the distribution was suitable for you whether that time and that date was uh, fine for you so so that you may have the information did you reach distribution point easily you can ask this question also it's also very important so that you may know that whether the, the distribution points were easily accessible to the beneficiaries or not if no if they say no it was not easy so explain why they would say the distance we we we, we were living at a distance of this much kilometer and that was very difficult for us so you can share this information with project staff to uh ensure in future that they should select uh, easily accessible distribution points for the beneficiaries you can also ask them how long did you have to wait at the distribution site to get the food pack you can ask them this question also it's also very good because uh you can obtain information about the time they have uh, waited there uh, at the distribution point so here you can obtain number of hours or number of minutes etc so we have selected right minutes and hours like 30 minute 40 minute 50 minute 1 hour 2 hour 3 hours so you can then um, you know identify different trends that how much time for the distribution different beneficiaries had to wait then you can ask them are you satisfied with the distribution process was the distribution process good are you satisfied with that yes no or you can uh, add here very much satisfied uh, less satisfied uh, dissatisfied etc are you satisfied with the quality of the food pack item you can ask this question also about the quality whether the items were of quality or not you can ask was it convenient for you to receive the food items or is it convenient for you to receive cash and purchase food for that cash you can ask this question because sometime beneficiaries complain that you should give us cash not food items because with the cash we can obtain different type of items which are very relevant Uh, to our needs so you can ask this question that whether they select food item cash don't know or no response so you can use this information in future also if no response then ask to explain the relevant problem if they say uh, don't know or no response so you can ask them uh, to explain what is the real problem to them they might say that yes we should be given some food item but there should be cash also etc etc uh did complaint number and focal person details share with you and at any distribution point we should have a complaint number displayed to the beneficiaries so you can ask them that whether there was a complaint number and focal person details share with you or not you can ask them were the deserving people selected for the food items and kits you can ask this question also but you will have to go in detail with the beneficiaries so that there might not be any biasness but you will be collecting this data only from those who have received the items so there might be less chances of biasness because he or she has already received the item so they will say whether the deserving people were selected or not or they might share with you that one of my uncle or one of my cousin is very poor but they didn't select them 
So you can ask them if no, explain why. So they can say that they were selecting people in that area only. They didn't come to this place, etc., etc. Did you face any difficulty in receiving the package due to COVID-19? So add, there is COVID-19, so you can add this type of question or you can add that did you face any difficulty in receiving the package due to this this problem if yes please explain up to this point these were related to the food item distribution and you can add some other question also you can see this questionnaire i have gone to each question so you can copy and paste this question and if you need this questionnaire so i can share that with you also uh, leave a comment and i will share it with you then if you have conducted some other interventions beside their distribution also so you can add questions related to that also because you are going to the beneficiaries and obtaining information so you can add some other questions for example if you have conducted awareness raising sessions etc so you can add questions uh, related to that to those areas also so this is the questionnaire basically simple questionnaire for you now when you have completed this questionnaire so you can print uh, take printouts and then uh, make a plan, plan, plan like this. This is the sample beneficiary. So you can add the staff who will be collecting the data. The staff are the enumerator. Then the date of the data collection and etc. You can add them and then uh, give the list to relevant staff members and they can collect the data. And after the data collection, you can do the analysis. And for how to conduct the analysis, I have done a detailed video on that and the link is given in the description so you can watch that also. So for PDM, you just need sampling, then you just need a tool and then data collection and then analysis of that uh, distribution data. If you like the video, so kindly click the like button, share it and subscribe the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Dear viewers, we have started this YouTube channel. There are free of cost learning tutorial on if you want to learn Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access. PowerPoint, MS Word, other learning tips. So we have detailed playlists and there are hundreds of tutorials on Microsoft Excel, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, how to design presentation, Microsoft Access, how to develop databases and manage data, online data collection, learning Google Form, Kobo, MS Forms. If you visit this channel, you can find lots of video tutorials. Kindly support us, visit the channel, for example, in MS Excel, you will find these sessions in a proper sequence. For example, in MS Excel playlist, we have this basic session and then session two, three, four. So if you start learning these sessions, so from the start, you can go ahead and you will find in a sequence sessions on Microsoft basics, data analysis, conditional format, pivot tables, use of if, uh, concatenate formulas, dependent drop down list, validation, name managers, VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP function, F function, uh, advanced use of count, F in some ifs, how to find duplicates, tricks and tips related to Microsoft Excel, how to develop search boxes, searchable drop down list, aggregate functions, tracking performance of the projects or any other uh, analysis of research that you have conducted, for example, school going and other such studies. There are sessions on uh, how to develop beautiful charts, attractive charts, speedometers, uh, dashboards in Microsoft Excel. Similarly, in PowerPoint also you will find how to design beautiful presentation in PowerPoint, how to do in MS Access also you will find all these sessions in proper sequence. Uh, the Access Tutorials playlist, here are almost eight sessions. Uh, in session one you will find the basics, how to create tables, queries, forms, and then you will go on with advanced options in Microsoft Access. Similarly, you will find tutorial on how to uh, collect online data, Google Form, uh, Kobo, uh, MS Form. Uh, you will find also the use of MS Word, the mail merge functions. There are session on SPSS also. So you can learn SPSS if you need to do some analysis in SPSS. There is a series on project management also, how to conduct need assessment studies. Kindly support us, visit the channel watch learn and improve your productivity thank you so much